Just because you aren't a painter doesn't mean that you can't use brushes, and Photoshop brushes are a great creative tool to help you extend your capabilities in Photoshop. Brushes can allow you to create a wide range of textures and edges and effects to your images that help you bring your vision to life. For this challenge, you need to use a Photoshop brush to take your creativity even further in post-processing. Using Photoshop brushes does not mean you need to make your photographs look like paintings. Instead, there are different shapes and configurations, and you can apply these to your brush tools in Photoshop to yield a variety of different results. In the past, I've even used Photoshop brushes to add fake eyelashes to a beauty photograph, or to make a photo look worn by adding torn edges, or I've added smoke to augment the atmosphere in the scene. I've used grunge brushes to add textures for a gritty effect. In fact, you can even make your own brushes out of any shape and any texture you want. Did you know that Adobe even has a free program to allow you to create your own brushes from photos you've taken? Adobe Brush CC allows you to take photos of patterns and textures and brush strokes or any elements that you want from your iPad or iPhone and quickly turn them into brushes you can use for Photoshop. You get a ton of control over these brushes and you might be able to create exactly what you need for this project. Luckily, if you don't want to go ahead and make your own brushes, many brush packs are completely free online if you know where to look. There are hundreds of them. I urge you to poke around some of the sites listed here. Do some Google searches, see what type of brushes you might encounter. I even provide a few free brushes on my site, including those free eyelash brushes I talked about earlier. These sites are all great places to look for brushes. Let's take a look at one way that I've used Photoshop brushes to get creative. This is the image that I have selected for this challenge, and it's actually a photograph that I took during one of my beauty intensives, which is a workshop that I have at my studio in New York City. What I've decided I want for this photograph is I want to make it look like it was sponge painted to life, or maybe watercolor, or something like that. So I want the edges of the subject to actually look like they were painted in, perhaps with spatters or paint of some sort. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate my background, and in between my background copy and my background, I'm going to create a new blank and empty layer. And this is going to be whatever color I want the canvas of my paper to be. I could actually put a textured canvas here, and later on I could play with blend modes, and there's a lot of things I could do to get creative. But for right now, let's just go with a white paper. I'm going to turn that top background there back on. And what I want to do is I want to hide it. I wanted to put it out of view, so then I could use my paint brushes to bring back the photograph with unusual brush strokes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit over here on my Add Layer Mask button, holding the Alt or Option key. And what it does is adds a black mask. This is going to hide that portrait, that beauty image. And so you'll only see what's below it. And in this case, it is the white canvas. Now, if you understand adjustment layers and layer masks, you'll understand what I'm doing here. If not, make sure you check out some of my other tutorials that cover the subject. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a white brush and I'm going to go up to my brush options and I just downloaded a brand new pack of paint brushes. In this case, they look kind of like watercolor spatters. So this is going to work perfectly for me. And since I know how adjustment layers with layer masks work, and in this case, a layer mask on my beauty portrait, Wherever I paint white is going to show the image beside it. So for example, watch how I can bring this photograph back to life using these brush strokes. And I can switch it up and grab a different brush and I can vary the size of my brush and the spatter. Beautiful. And I can just keep switching between brushes so that I can get a more organic or realistic look. and you can get as detailed as you want on this, or you can do very general like I'm doing. Perfect. And notice, as I'm layering over, it'll look like the paint is actually layered upon itself. And it's all going to depend specifically on the brush that you have selected. So think of it this way. Perhaps you want to have the edges of a photograph to look like they're worn, like they're melted, or perhaps like an old wet plate. You could use this technique to achieve that goal. So let's try something just about like this, for example. If I don't like it, no problem. 
I simply erase the mask, hit Alter Option to add the mask again, and try it over again to see a different technique. Now, did you know that this is a brush that I downloaded online? It's something that I found quickly, simply, and completely free. But you can actually create your very own brushes that you can work with right here in Photoshop using Adobe Brush. And what you can do is you can photograph any texture, any doodle, anything that you find and turn it into a brush that you can utilize. You can make a brush of your own logo or perhaps you could use a grunge texture. So we're going to take a look at that right now. Okay, so let's take a look at Adobe Brush and the fun that you can have with it and also how it could help you with this challenge. Right now I'm on my iPad and so I'm going to click over to the Adobe Brush app. And I'm given a variety of different brushes that I can actually use that's already built into my library, but what I really want is I want to create my own. So I'm going to hit the plus sign on the left hand side of the screen. Now, what this is asking me is, where is the source file that I'm going to create this brush from? Is it something that I have as an asset on Creative Cloud or is it a file that I have saved to my camera roll? Maybe I found this file online somewhere. Or maybe I want to take a picture of something right in front of me. And what's cool is that you can get endlessly creative. I could take a picture of a grunge texture, for example, and that's actually what's inspired me right now, is the iPad case that I have on this iPad is this kind of distressed, grunge texture. It's really interesting. And you know what? I'd like to turn that into a grunge brush that I could work with later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to access my camera and I'm going to put the iPad case right in front of me. And you can see exactly what my camera sees. Let me click to focus. And what you can see now is the part that you can see in color would be part of the brush. It's actually knocked out or kicked out some of the texture that it assumes doesn't belong. And if I slide up and down the left-hand side here with this little slider, I can keep more of the texture or I can reduce some of that texture. So in fact, I could make it have a lot more negative space and that might actually work perfectly for a brush. So I'm gonna do something just about like here for my grunge texture. I'm going to click on the image to make sure that I'm focused. And I'm going to take the photo. And if I don't like it, no problem. I can take another one. Great, so I'm going to accept that and work on it in Adobe Brush. All right, now what you can see on the left-hand side is that I can create brushes for Adobe Photoshop Sketch. I can also create Illustrator brushes. I have a lot of different things, but I'm going to be working with Adobe Photoshop CC. And I click on the right-hand side here just with my finger to see what the brush is looking like. And I think I'm going to want to edit a little bit. So I'm going to hit on Edit. And what I'll be able to do is make a few changes. I can refine this brush add more texture, take away more texture. I can erase certain areas that I don't like or I can crop. Perhaps I think that the top really doesn't have the interest and really the interest is at the bottom of the frame here. So I can do that. Perfect, so I'm gonna save that. And what you will see is now that brush is saved under brush one and I can save this into my library and I can actually access it as long as I'm signed in to my Adobe Creative Cloud account I'll be able to access this from Adobe Photoshop CC and now I can use this on my desktop for whatever creations I have in mind. 